Stop right there. If you're a CEO, would you admit this? Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. I talk about the world's most exciting sales, marketing, and business strategies so that both you and I can grow our businesses faster and better. Today we're talking about leadership and admitting when you are wrong as the leader of a company. I don't care if you're a five-person company, a hundred-person company, or a thousand-person company. You as the CEO, everyone looks to for answers. So when you are wrong, what do you do? But before we get into that, don't forget, head over to my website, jtimmerman.com. It's where I provide free resources like copywriting templates and sales templates that you can use inside your business to grow better. But as a leader, you have to realize that all eyes are in you, not, not only from your team and your employees, but also from your customers, clients, and the world around you. And the bigger your company, the more eyeballs are on you. The more employees you have, the more customers you have, the more clients you have, and the more press that will be looking at you, right? So what do you do when you are wrong? Now, this is a sliding scale because when you become bigger, you have to tread these waters much more carefully than when you are smaller. So let's start with the small business. When it's just you and a few employees, let's say five employees, it's so much easier to walk into that boardroom uh, and just say, you know what? I was wrong my fault. Let's pivot quickly and let's make some decisions on how to rectify my bad decision. When your company grows much larger, now when you have 50 employees or 100 employees, there's a much bigger ship that you have to turn into a different direction if you made the wrong decision. So for example, if you made a decision that was to go into a market and you didn't quite organize your team to do the research and you find out that that wasn't a good use of time or financial investment. It's going to take a lot more effort and time to pull yourself out of that market and shut down operations to reallocate them to a market that is profitable and is growing. You're going to have to talk to clients and customers that made purchases over there. You're going to have to close contracts. You're going to have to get legal on it. You're going to have to do all of those things. So it's much harder. So what do you do? Do you admit that you're wrong? Do you admit that it was your decision? Do you blame it on your executive team who brought that to you and said this is a good opportunity? What do you do? And if you're a thousand person company, just multiply that times 10 or 100 or some unknown number of how much harder it is to redirect that ship if you made the wrong decision. You can just see this when you look at public companies with thousands of employees or tens of thousands of employees and they make one small wrong step and are scrutinized in the media, their stock price goes down. So many repercussions can happen with a very large company. But what does that CEO do? Do they admit when they were wrong? Do they blame it on the executive team? Do they blame it on employees or market conditions? In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, and to be fair, I don't have a hundred person company. I mean, I definitely don't have a public company, but in my experience, the long-term best possible strategy as the CEO is to always take responsibility. And the reason is because it is your responsibility. That's why. It's your responsibility as a five-person company, a hundred-person company, or a 1,000-person company to take responsibility for captaining the ship. That's literally what you're hired to do. And a public company CEO is paid $10, $20 million a year, uh, you know, stock options and things like that, all said and done, in order to take that responsibility. So the worst thing you can do is to blame it on anybody else because it doesn't do any good. It doesn't even save you face because when you blame it on somebody else, all the negative impact comes back in terms of company morale, uh, company trust in you as a leader, um, uh, market trust in you as a leader. If you just defer, 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 people don't look at you with respect. They don't look at you like, you know what, that person did something wrong and they fixed it. That's the best possible scenario is that you take whatever it is you did wrong and you find a solution for it. When you don't have a solution, okay, that's when you go back to your team. That's when you troubleshoot. That's where you lean on your executive team and your uh, operators and your sales team and your marketing team, right? That's where it's kind of a give and take as a leader. You need to listen to your executives. 
but you need to make the ultimate decision and be okay with that ultimate decision. Worst case scenario, you effed up so bad that you have to step down as the CEO. So the bigger you are, the more responsibility you have, the more risk you have taking that responsibility. But one thing I am confident on, and I would be confident if I did run a thousand person company, is that leaders take all the responsibility because that's why they pay you the big bucks, hopefully. If you know a good leader that needs to watch this, forward this video to them, share it with them, share it with your friends and family, whoever you think would find this uh, entertaining or informational. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, head over to my website, jtimmerman.com. It's where I put all my templates for copywriting examples and sales examples. Free to download. Check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.